What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out WWE wrestlers became famous by stealing from smaller wrestlers. This is by Tap Out Corner. Now we've had this conversation before how pretty much wrestlers have taken or gotten inspiration from other wrestlers whether they were popular or whether they weren't as known it's happened and it's going to continue to happening uh happen because you know wrestling is a revolving door it's rare that you see something new and unique and when you do see something new and unique guess what someone's going to emulate it or potentially copy it it's just part of not even just wrestling it's just part of life how many times have we seen a movie or uh maybe a, a song be remade or redone or inspire other forms of media other songs other movies that's just how the human nature work when it comes to to art or you know creations people will be inspired by something and they may end up using it to further their own uh product or in wrestling terms further their own gimmick so we're going to check out some of these moments appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel and uh let's get right into this one should be a good one Imagine coming up with an idea only for someone to steal it and become famous and make millions from it. That's yeah. exactly what happened to these wrestlers. In 2011, our truth began feuding with John Cena and calling all the young WWE fans Little Jimmys. This Classic. evolved into Truth having an imaginary friend named Little Jimmy, who has <laughs> continued to be part of Truth's character to this day. However, Little Jimmy was plagiarized. Prior to Little Jimmy, fellow wrestler JTG had pitched the idea of having an imaginary puppet character that only JTG and the WWE fans wow. could see. Wow. WWE oh. Creative actually respond positively to the idea. However, they and JTG were not exactly on the same page. WWE wanted to use a hand puppet, while JTG wanted the imaginary friend to be a bit more elaborate, like a puppet you would see in a Jim Henson production. Eventually, JTG stopped hearing from WWE Creative, and it appeared the idea had died. However, not long after JTG pitched this idea, our truth started having an imaginary wow. friend with him. It seems like WWE Creative took JTG's idea, tweaked it a bit, and gave it to our truth. I guess that's quite i never knew that one definitely did not know that <laughs> damn even though that let me little jimmy stuff is fucking hilarious it would have been interesting to see if he could have pulled that off or something similar to that but i never knew that of course, that's wild be creative was on a roll of plagiarism in 2011 because it happened to Mark Henry too. By 2011, the world's strongest man's career had become Dang. very stagnant. <laughs> Henry wasn't used in many big storylines and took a back seat to a lot of other wrestlers. That would change though when he introduced the Hall of Pain storyline. Mm -hmm. Henry started not only beating main event wrestlers, but also injuring them and putting them yeah. out of action, which is why it was called the Hall of Pain. The story- Which was easily, I mean, I, I don't even think anyone would refute that. It's his best- best character persona best title reign he had like this was the best version of mark henry and even then they they kind of really didn't utilize it as much as they should have they you know tested the waters a little bit and it was something that made fans actually care about mark henry as a menacing dominant force but they didn't really expound upon it but easily the best version of mark henry in wwe at least Storyline also led to Mark Henry winning the World Heavyweight Championship, which was a huge accomplishment. However, the Hall of Pain idea was actually stolen from another wrestler. In the early 2010s, Brodus Clay was absent from WWE to film a movie. When Clay asked what creative plans WWE had for him when he returned, he was told they had nothing, and they suggested Brodus come up with something. Brodus Clay suggested that he become a beast who beats up everyone and mm. ducks them into his Hall of Pain. Brodus was told it was a great idea. However, WWE decided to steal the idea and give it to Mark Henry. Despite having his idea taken from him Bruce clay was not bitter about it now it's one thing to that's wild because he <sighs> y'all remember i think he was like a he i think he debuted as like a, a dancing dinosaur or some shit i could be wrong i think that's what it was and he had the funk the doctors it was it was cringe it was weird and then they tried to portray him a little bit more seriously it, the damage had been done maybe that would have worked for him but i think it, it it it's just crazy how i don't know if it would have got him over or made it much of an impact if that same gimmick was if that same gimmick wasn't on mark henry and they put it on him instead of mark henry i don't know if he would have got as much over that's a very interesting question and to really think about to be honest with you
Steal an idea from an adult. Imagine stealing an idea from a kid and not giving them anything in return. Matt Hardy, as well as his brother Jeff, started wrestling when they were kids and scratch and call their way up the ranks of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Matt Hardy got the opportunity to send a tape to WCW to try and get a job with the company. Matt Hardy had been wrestling under the name High Voltage and used that in his tryout video. You see, it is time for a new Donnie in the world of professional wrestling. And that ascending force goes by the title of High Voltage. WCW That's ended wild. up not hiring Matt Hardy. However, they would steal his name. In the mid-90s, WCW debuted a new tag team consisting of the wrestlers Robbie Rage and Kenny Chaos. WCW needed a name for this team, so remembering Matt Hardy's tryout tape, Rage wow. and Chaos were given the name <laughs> High Voltage. It was confirmed by wrestlers in the company that yes, the name High Voltage was taken from Matt Hardy, since WCW correctly assumed Matt had a trademarked it. Bret Hart was not just a genius Yep, he didn't trademark it. He was just trying to, you know, get his name out there. And they took it. The power of a trademark, bro. He, I mean, of course, he's not thinking about trademarking and anything. He's just trying to get his, you know, get his foot in the door. Uh, we'll take this kid's, I, his name sounds nice. We'll take that. We'll use that. That's wild. It's in the ring, but outside of it too. Back in the early 90s, Bret Hart pitched a match idea to Vince McMahon that he had come up with before he signed with WWE. It was called a ladder match, where the goal of the fight wasn't to pin or submit your opponent. Instead, wrestlers had to climb a ladder what? and gain custody of the prize hanging above the ring. Now, to Vince McMahon's credit, he saw the potential of Bret Hart's idea and turned it into a reality. Yeah. The first WWE ladder match was held in July 1992 and featured Bret Hart defending the Intercontinental Championship against Shawn Michaels. Bret won but the match wasn't shown on TV uh -huh. or pay-per-view, so most fans didn't know yeah. it existed. Instead, the first ladder match broadcast on TV was Razor Ramon vs. Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 10. So to most people, Razor and Shawn were the innovators of the ladder match. This upset Bret Hart, since he uh -huh. wanted to be part of the WrestleMania ladder match. This started to build animosity between Hart and McMahon, which would come to a breaking point about three years later. Any fan of the- That would make sense. I never knew that he was the one that came up with that idea. Didn't know that. <laughs> I knew that wasn't the first match between uh, Razor Ramon and, and uh, HBK. That wasn't the first ladder match. That was the first one like televised, but the other one wasn't televised. That's wild, bro. I can, I can understand where the frustrations start to build. The Attitude With Era will remember Jerry the King Lawler's iconic line. And uh, every time a beautiful diva would come uh, walking out, I'd say, Hey, JR, look, puppies! Oh, look at Lita, she's got the puppies in a net! Woohoo! However, it was not the <laughs> king who came up with the term puppies. Living up to his name, the Road Dog was actually the one that came up with the juvenile dog nickname. Surprisingly, Road Dog was not upset by Lawler's thievery and actually took it as an honor that Kane used his line and made it famous. So I think it was actually the Road Dog who came up with the term puppies. We want to see her puppies! Now, uh, I must admit, I would have been pretty mad if what <laughs> happened to Dean Ambrose had happened to me. In That's 2014, cool. Seth Rollins betrayed his S.H.I.E.L.D. teammates, Dean Classic. Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Dean ended up feuding with Rollins for several months, with them ending their rivalry in a Hell in a Cell match. To end the feud on a high note, Dean pitched the idea that they'd rip off the canvas of the ring, exposing the boards underneath it. This would make the match extremely brutal, but it was met with hostility. Vince mm -hmm. McMahon didn't think fans would understand it, and Triple H actually rolled his eyes at Ambrose's idea. Dean and Seth ended up not exposing the ring boards during their match, but a different match would. One year later, Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker were facing off inside Hell in a Cell. During the match, Lesnar ripped off the canvas and exposed the ring boards. The reaction this got from the crowd just proves the thought that fans wouldn't understand it. I don't know. What the hell is he doing? I remember this. On top of that, less than four years after Dean pitched the idea, Johnny Gargano and yep, Tommaso Ciampa would this. do the same spot during their match at NXT TakeOver Chicago 2, which was overseen by Triple H. Even hardcore WWE fans might not remember. And that's that's crazy because I think if Dean would have did that in that match, it would have definitely added the, the, the dangerousness to the Hell in the Cell. Because at that time, then the Hell in the Cells had just been honestly tamed. Um, so it would have definitely been something they could have did, did because guess what? They did it afterwards. They did it afterwards. So it's, it's kind of, kind of messed up that they didn't want to take his idea because they didn't think people would care or it would add anything to the match. It does. Cause if you're doing that, you're trying to legitimately end someone. And if you're in a hell in a cell, you can't really use blood as much even though i think it should be allowed in that particular match 
the best way you can do is really show I'm trying to put this person in the hospital for a very long time. <laughs> so that's wild that he came up with the idea, but they didn't want to do it. But then they end up doing it anyway. That's it's messed up. Remember Just Joe. He never wrestled on Raw or Just SmackDown. Joe. It was relegated to shows like Jacked and Sunday Night Heat. However, Joe did pitch ideas to WWE Creative to try and get a spot on the bigger shows. One of his ideas may sound familiar. And then I pitched, um, I said, I'd like to do a thing where I cut my hair real short, wear a suit and tie, because it's right at the tail end of the, of the grunge era. Saying that, you know, the American kids are just a bunch of bums now. They need to cut their hair and get a real job and straighten up and fly right and call our group the moral majority. And he says, oh, I, don't, I don't really see a lot of a lot of motion in that. And I'm like, your whole audience are kids with, you know, crazy hair and piercings. This is ideal, but he wouldn't go for it. This is almost the exact wow. same idea as the right to censor, which is a group of wrestlers who cut their hair, wore a suit and tie, and complained that WWE and its fans were too vulgar. As for Just Joe, he was fired a few weeks before Right to Censor competed at WrestleMania 17. When Hulk Hogan was in That's messed up, bro. That's messed up. That literally went as he started explaining, I'm like, that sounds like Right to Censor. And it worked because you're telling fans that's been used to the attitude era and the wildness and the craziness and the uncensored, unfilteredness, you're telling them to behave and and, and don't curse and, and don't swear and, and women got to cover up and stuff like that. Like, as a kid, seeing them, anytime you heard the siren, you just, oh, no, not these losers. Like, but it worked. And the fact that he came up with it, essentially, and then they fired him before they really started to move with that idea. That's sounds like WWE for sure inducted into the WB Hall of Fame, he said this. Uh -oh. And one day, I went to Ford Homer Hestley Armory and this guy named Superstar Billy Graham. I'm telling you, this guy climbed the second ropes. He hit a double bicep. And I looked at my father and said, Dad, I want to be just like that guy right there. It turned out Hulk Hogan was very literal about that. But yeah. Before Hulk Hogan became a wrestling star right. in the 1980s, Superstar Billy Graham was tearing it up uh -huh. in the 70s. Billy Graham looked like a million bucks with beach blonde hair and an unbelievable physique. Graham's yep. arms were so big, he started calling them pythons, and he began ripping off his shirt. Mm -hmm. mm, that doesn't sound familiar at all, mm -hmm. does it? I mean, this is an insult to Hulk Hogan, but he said there was a cheap superstar Billy Graham knockoff. I think he did that. Now, to be fair to Hogan, other wrestlers like Jesse Ventura copied Billy Graham too. Mm -hmm. However, Hulk Hogan was the one who got the most mileage out of using someone else's gimmick. What's surprising is that Billy Graham wasn't mad at Hulk Hogan or anyone who stole his character. In fact, he actually took it as a compliment that someone wanted to be like him. Now this next one and that's awesome, man. That uh, that's that's truly awesome that he didn't like take offense to that. And once again, you know he could have, but he didn't. And he, he, wrestling is all about like when you're in your prime, you do what you do, and you you end up inspiring people. And if someone ends up becoming a wrestler, and then they take what you've done and they make it ten times even bigger. It's no point in getting mad at them because they're keeping the business that you love, that you made money in, they're keeping it going and inspiring new individuals. So as long as people give credit, like, hey, he got that from him, that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's it's, it's one of those type of things where, you know, I'm glad that he he didn't really uh, get too upset about it. So that was that was pretty cool, though. That was tough. Feeling, but shows the kind of person Bray Wyatt was, so Rest we need piece, to highlight it. In 2012, fans were introduced to the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt. Rather than your usual energized wrestling oh, character, piece, uh, Bray Graham was a lot well. quieter, speaking softly while wearing a floral shirt and sitting in a rocking chair. However, there was something unsettling about Bray Wyatt that made him one of the most intriguing and creepy wrestlers on the roster. What they gonna do, man? What you gonna do to something like me? However, almost two decades earlier, there was another WWE wrestler with an oh, eerily similar wow. persona. I don't like wrestlers touching me. Damn. No, I definitely don't want them crawling on me. This character's name was Waylon Mercy, a soft-spoken yet kind of scary character. Oh, Compared wow. to a lot of wrestlers at the time, Waylon Mercy really stood out. Unfortunately, Mercy's career was cut short due to injuries. The good news was that Waylon Mercy's persona was able to be reborn over 15 years later. While at the WWE Performance That's Center, tough. Waylon was approached oh, no. by a young wrestler named Wyndham Rotunda. Here's how the story goes. Wyndham came to me and asked me if I'd mind him, you know, doing something like the Waylon Mercy character. And I told him no. I think that, you know, we kicked around some ideas and uh, I talked to him for a while, but I think he's done a great job with it. 
From here, the Bray Wyatt character was born wow. and became a spiritual successor to Waylon Mercy's character. I never knew that. Now, That's tough. the real heartwarming part. That's tough, bro. That's super cool. And he was, like I said, he was cool about it. He didn't trip. All right, cool. Uh, you know, we could spit, spitball some ideas and try to make it, you know, make it into something. And that that was a dope character for Bray Wyatt to get out of that Husky Har uh, Harris, um, you know, persona he had before he went to that like to get out for people to move past the husky hairs and that transition that was perfect man and the fact that he was cool about it that's awesome bro even though Bray Wyatt had more success in WWE than Waylon Mercy, Bray never forgot who helped him get there. In 2019, Bray Wyatt introduced the Firefly Funhouse, which featured a number of creepy children's characters. Mm -hmm. One of them was named Mercy the Buzzard, and oh, of course, was based on Waylon Mercy. Didn't Not know only that, that, but Waylon I'm himself there, voiced the character. Yeah, let's hurry it up. I got stuff to do. What? To see what Bray Wyatt I didn't even know that. Fan, watch That's cool. That's fucking cool. Rest in peace, Bray. That's awesome. This is why it's okay when wrestlers are inspired by other wrestlers and they, they come up, you know, use similar gimmicks, but like more of a, a, um, paying, uh, homage, <laughs> but paying, uh, homage to, uh, a wrestler and, and what they did, but not necessarily taking the whole gimmick, but switching it and making their, their own. Like, I think that's cool. I, I'm all for that. That's what keeps the wrestling business going. You know, if you can come up with something new and creative, that's awesome. If you can get something from somewhere else and put your little spin on it, put your little twist on it, and it works, there's nothing wrong with that too. So, but comment down below. Let me know some other videos you guys want me to check out. I appreciate all the love and support. Roll to 150K, and I'm still here on Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.